Hello fellow SRT4 enthusiasts, and on today's video we're going to be talking about axles. If you own an SRT4 long enough, you're probably going to have to deal with this issue. And there's nothing wrong with the axles that came on this car, it's just we're putting quite a bit of power to the ground. And if there is any kind of wheel bounce, eventually those axles will break. And just for also from normal uh, wear and tear, they will need to be replaced. Now, over the many years I owned this uh, car, I gone through uh, several brands of axles and I experimented with different installation methods to get the axle in there correctly and make it last longer. Um, and I have found what I think is the best way to install it and also what I believe is the best brand for the bug um, for the axle of this car, which is the Duralast uh, brand. Uh, strangely enough, the Duralast brand has uh, turned out to be a very good axle. Uh, the Duralast brand goal is not a remanufactured axle. It's a brand new axle that you can get at the local, local parts auto store. And you don't even need to take a core. You just pay for it and here's your axle. So there is no real downtime with it. Now there are some things that I do recommend you do to the car in addition to just replacing axles and that is going to be get solid mounts if you get solid motor mounts you're going to be protecting your axles and you're going to be getting more grip because now your tires are not bouncing as much you're going to be able to put the power down and you're going to extend the longevity of the life of the axles additionally you also want to check your struts if the struts are worn same thing your tires are going to be bouncing and not going to be there's not going to be enough firm pressure to put the power down and you're going to break some axles and finally use some common sense if you feel that the tires have started to bounce because you're taking off with a heavy heavy foot back off the accelerator pedal and if you don't back off the accelerator pedal you will probably break an axle and have to be towed back home well with that being said let's get on it The first order of business is to drain the transmission fluid. However, draining the fluid is only required when doing the driver's side axle. When replacing the passenger side axle, no fluid will leak out. The other way to get around emptying the fluid will be to lift the car very high on the driver's side, so high that when you pull the axle out, no fluid comes out. But this is not as safe as lifting the car entirely and having the fluid come out as the factory calls out. Check out the link for my quick video on how I drain and replace the fluid on the SRT4 transmission. Next up is removing the caliper bolts. After setting the brake pads aside, I like to hang the caliper out of the way by placing it as high as I can, attaching it to the suspension, in this case using a nice bungee cord. Next up is removing the cotter pin, which is fairly easy, which I use some pliers and a hammer and pull this bad boy right out. To remove the axle nut, I've used a screwdriver to keep the disc from spinning. Once the axle nut is broken loose, it can be very easily removed, but sometimes these things are pretty stubborn. I like to use some PB blaster and then a lot of force to get this guy out. Now it's time to remove the bolts that hold this bracket in place. Once the bolts are out, the bracket slides right out. The tie rod is fairly easy as long as the top doesn't start spinning. So I usually start this with an air tool, but in this case it came out fairly easy just with my regular ratchet. I separate the tie rod from the arm using a rubber mallet. However, if this thing was very stubborn, there is a special tool that can be used to remove the tie rod without damaging the boot that goes around it. Now, time to remove the strut bolts. This is where air tools are your best friend. It's important that the strut bolts don't turn a lot since they're serrated. So I like to hold the front end while I remove the back end with the air tool. Now 
Now I finally remove the axle nut. A couple of taps get the strut bolts right out. To remove the axle, I lightly tap it in and remove the remaining washer. Sometimes it's going to be a little bit stubborn, but a little bit of uh, leverage such as using a hammer helps in removing this out. Moving on to the bottom of the car, there is a snap ring that has to come loose before the axle will pop out. I like to pry against the case, not the seal. I like to pry against the case until this thing pops right out. When pulling the axle, I'm being very careful to pull this straight out because there is a seal inside of that transmission and if that axle is pulled and not straight, it will rip or damage that seal and then you'll have an oil leak down the future. The passenger side is slightly different because the axle does not go into the transmission. The axle is actually connected to a mid axle. To remove it, it's fairly simple. Again, you just have to tap on it to get the axle to release. I like to tap in this little section and you'll feel the axle pop right out. Once the axle is free, I can now remove it from the front, just like I did the other side, pulling it straight out. Here you can see how different the passenger side axle is from the driver side axle. Again, it goes into a mid axle. It does not go directly into the transmission. Here's where being careful pays off dividends, making sure that the axle goes in straight and none of the boots are damaged in the process of being reinstalled is key to ensuring that the new axle will last a long time. Reinstalling the axle is basically a reverse of all the procedures for removing it. I like to use an extension bar to kind of help me line up the holes back again. A little bit of patience goes a long way on this step. It is important not to forget that the washer goes in first, then the nut. Now these nuts are not reusable. When you buy a new axle, it will come with a new nut. I have reused nuts in the past, but they are not meant to be reused. That's just being me being cheap and not buying a brand new nut. Again, I like to hold the front of the bolt to keep it from spinning. Once the bolts are in, it's just a matter of torquing to spec.
Since I don't have a torque range that goes as high as 180 foot pounds, I should use my breaker bar and go with the German spec of good and tight. Since I took off the hardware for the brakes, might as well clean it up and lube it up. I like to place the brake pads in the way that I took them out. I know this side goes against the piston because I can see the mark right here and the other side goes on the opposite side. Finally, to secure the axle, I place the wave washer back in its place, following by the retaining nut. And then I use a brand new cutter pin to secure the retaining nut in place. Some people like to bend the legs of the cutter pin in one direction, some people like to do it in split, just the way like I do it here. I think it's just a matter of preference. The installation is not complete, time to take the car off for a test drive. Thanks for watching guys, if you guys enjoyed this video consider subscribing for more and see you on the next one!